For those of you who are brand new to filmmaking and not sure what's next, let's start right here. I curated a list of essential gear you need to get started and become the ultimate content creating machine. What's up everyone, welcome to another amazing two part series. Part one consists of four categories, cameras, monitors, sound, and lighting. And within those categories, we're gonna explore different options starting from cheapest to most expensive. And guys, I'm gonna be giving away a free power grade which you can take and apply to your footage and then see my grading process. All you have to do to win is subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, and the winner will be announced in the next video. And that's not all. Because my love grows for you guys by the second, I'm gonna be showing you how to download my teal and orange lip at the end of this video. Guys, hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying the content on the channel. Subscribe for more awesomeness and let's roll the intro. If this is your first time on this channel, my name is Kazi. I'm a professional colorist in LA. I run a virtual studio called The Post Village. Link is in the description. And the purpose of this channel is to simplify color grading and what I've learned, what took me over a decade, I wanna share that and give that to you today. I'm gonna start off with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I saw it at NAB 2019 and guys, come on, look at it. So 1295 for a brand new camera. You can find it cheaper on Craigslist or eBay. Let's state the obvious. I mean, look at this. It's coming with DaVinci Resolve Studio Activation Key. That's $300 worth, okay? So what are you really paying for this brand new camera? $1,000? You kidding me? A camera that shoots 4K, dual native ISO, has a really, really banger five inch display in the back and it can shoot 120 frames in HD, and it gives you three different options. I mean, you can use a CFast card, but if that's too expensive, you can use an SD card, or you can just plug in your external drive straight through the USB-C port. 13 stops of dynamic range, and it shoots in RAW, or it shoots in ProRes. Both of these are amazing options, and it's using micro four thirds, for your lenses which means you can pretty much throw any lens on it and it will take it if you're starting out this is a great camera okay my number two choice and which is a bit more expensive than the pocket camera is panasonic gh5 it's been around for a little bit it's just such an all-rounder camera you can take great photos with it or for video, it has some of the most advanced features in any DSLR available today. The in-body image stabilizer in this camera is the best in the business. It shoots 4 to 2 10 bit internally in 4K. It's one of the sharpest images that you can get. It's micro four thirds. So once again, you can throw pretty much any lens on it. And you can also purchase, I think it's $99. You can purchase their V-Log, which allows you to get about 12, 12.5 stops of dynamic range and I highly recommend doing that and the process is so simple you just drop the vlog to rec 709 and boom you're just in the right ballpark battery life is great it's just one of the best options out there for the price point all right moving on Canon C200B Canon really has a full command over their color science. You bring the footage in, you drop a lot, and boom, you're 85% there. It's unreal. All my videos I shoot with C200, you can shoot up to 60 frames in 4K. It has built-in ND filters, and it has two XLR inputs, dual pixel. It's the best auto-focusing system in the game. The image is so clean, even if you're shooting on 3200 or 6400 ISO, I'm the biggest fan of this camera. I cannot recommend it enough. Now let's move on to our second subcategory, which is gonna be on-camera monitors. A lot of the times you're shooting outside during the day, you know, you're just kind of crossing your fingers and going with it. The screen is like three inches so small and the quality is not that great and it's not that bright. So having an additional on-camera monitor, it's a must-have. 
If you're starting out and looking for something on a budget, I would highly recommend their Focus Series, $400 for 800 nits, and you just get so many more features. False color, focus assist, zebras on here. Right now I'm getting audio levels. Some of these monitors also have custom LUTs option. I upload my LUTs onto the monitor and I'm looking at it right now, how exactly it's gonna look after I throw my LUT on it in post. And then you can check out their other series. I'm using their Bright series. I think this is a 702. I've used it outside during the day and it's unbelievable. So highly recommend it. Moving on to microphones. If you're watching something on Vimeo, the difference between an amateur short film to a pro short film, sound. If you're starting out, this is a bare minimum option. Rode makes excellent products. So it even comes with a little shock absorber. So even if there's a little movement or something like that, it'll compensate for it. And it comes with the regular stereo jack, which can just go straight into your camera, as you can see right here. So it's perfect for DSLRs. My second recommendation and upgrade from that would be NTG four plus it's compact enough where you can just slap it right on top of your camera audio quality is significantly better than the last one and a billion times better when it comes to onboard microphone and then for lav options i own this absolutely must if i'm outside throw that thing on boom you're ready to go just go shoot have fun it's a no-brainer if you need a wireless solution next category one of my favorite near and dear to my heart since i went to school for cinematography and i cannot recommend aperture more most of my lights are aperture this guy the main key light is aperture 120 d2 the light in the back that's lighting that curtain right there is the mini 20 and then I also own their LS1 and a couple of their M9s. Excellent products, just go through their website, look at their stuff, reasonably priced. And the best thing about Aperture that I love the most, it's one of the greatest learning resource when it comes to cinematography and lighting. Go check out their YouTube and just eat their stuff up. They bring in legit cinematographers from different commercials and short films and films, and then let them take you through their lighting setups and do breakdowns. And then they have tons of behind the scenes too, where they show you exactly how they got what you see on the screen. Everything comes with these remotes, and then you just control the lights from that, you know? Boom, turn it off. Turn it on so it's just all right here i can change the intensity that goes for most of their lights so it's just definitely a must have i know it was a lot and hopefully it made sense and you were able to follow through now let's talk about the goodies let me show you how to get this LUT. link is in the description below and let me show you how i use it i built that look based off of a primary correction. So you still have to correct your image. Don't use it on a log image. Just fix your image a little bit, drop this LUT, and then see how it works. Let me know in the comment section below, what kind of camera do you use? What kind of lighting setup you have? Are you using a laptop? Are you on a desktop? What do you think of control surfaces? Everything in the comment section below. Let's start a dialogue. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, hit a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness and I will see you guys in the next video.